Hello and welcome to our Saturday stream. I'm Josh and this is our Fantasy Grounds Unity uh, image and map creation. Uh, during this stream we go over all of our image related news as well as all the tips and tricks and tutorials that we can use in our image. Um, not only just uh, map creation but all of our image products or projects rather uh, inside of uh, Fantasy Grounds. So thanks everyone for joining me today. And uh, we're going to be getting right into a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing some lighting things, uh, answering a few questions, and doing some other stuff as well. Uh, so uh, let's get moving along here. We got a, a bunch of new uh, releases that just came out. Uh, we have the new Modern Dark Theme as well as um, a new decal art pack, which is uh, super fun. Uh, we're going to be going through some of that as well, as well as um, some of the GM tokens, uh, the GM uh, symbols, rather. And we're also going to be doing a few other, um, um, uh, we're touching on a couple of things. I've, I've seen a, a bunch of questions, and uh, during Dave's stream yesterday, uh, he had a couple of questions about some of the lighting systems. So I'm going to go over a couple of those as well today. Uh, especially setting up small little lights inside of other areas where you want to have a dominant kind of ambient light system. Uh, we're going to look at that and I'm going to show you guys how you can set that up in a really easy manner. Uh, one of the things that we want to talk about today is how our um, lighting system actually interacts. Uh, and so that we have a better explanation, I've gone over it a couple of times, uh, but just to clarify those things and to make it a little bit easier to understand, uh, we're going to go through a couple of demonstrations with that today as well. Um, so great. Uh, so th again, thanks everyone for joining me and we're going to get right to it here because we have a whole lot of stuff to cover and hopefully we get through it all today. Uh, it looks like we already have a few questions here. Uh, oh, hey, Hauser. Uh, the text on the character sheet should be light color instead of black. Uh, are you talking along with the uh, tabs here? So along the tabs on this side. And there's a reason why that these ones are black, and that is because that is the default color. Uh, and uh, when we go into certain uh, avenues, um, well, especially, uh, for example, uh, there are a whole slew of different tabs that get brought up in different rule sets that are uh, dependent on certain extensions and whatnot, uh, and those are all going to be default in black. And so uh, trying to maintain that so that we have a, a really kind of easy integration, otherwise you're going to get a multitude of different col colors that are uh, going to be showing up in your tabs. Uh, so. Uh, unfortunately, what the, probably the best solution that I could offer uh, as far as like the tabs go is I could lighten up the actual tabs themselves uh, to help the black kind of stand out a little bit more. Uh, but we can certainly uh, mess around with that and see what we can do. Uh, let's see, Svenster's got a question. Is it possible to have two ambient lighting effects, one for inside and one for outside? Yes, it is. Yep, we can go over that as well today. Uh, yep, this theme should work in it should work in any rule set whatsoever. So it should work in Starfinder and as well as many of the other ones. Thanks, Fencer. Yeah, my week's been going great. Uh, thanks for the emails. Uh, hopefully, if we have time, we're going to show off some of your maps today. Otherwise, we'll do it next week. Oh yes, so font extensions, uh, any sort of extension, and so this is how the system actually works. Uh, even though your theme is in itself uh, its own extension, uh, I believe that we have set up a standardized kind of load order. Uh, so anything that loads in after uh, a theme, uh, or sometimes even before, depending on what it alters, uh, will actually interfere with a lot of the kind of aesthetic that you that is is presented here. I know, for example, there's a lot of uh, setting uh, extensions in Savage Worlds, uh, and I'm sure that there are a multitude as well for um, 5e. And uh, there is any any time that you layer on uh, multiple times of uh, of extensions, uh, there's no guarantee into their load order unless it's it's uh, predecided. So uh, depending on who creates those extensions and how and when and all of that sort of thing. Uh, but we can certainly uh, get any sort of uh, issue like that figured out. Uh, it's not too much of a problem. Uh, 
Yeah, great. Uh, so uh, let's dive right into it here. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is just go over. We kind of looked at the uh, modern dark theme last week as well. Uh, but let's get into some of these new um, creations here. So uh, my favorite by far is the decal art pack. And this is a uh, 100 images or so. I think it's at least 100. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but there's a multitude of paintings, textures, uh, different kind of uh, images here. Now, the intended original purpose of these was to be used as in our new uh, decal system. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with this, you can set any image uh, to uh, a decal uh, on your desktop here. Uh, and we can we can do a couple of these here. Uh, let's find something that will be fun and interesting. So let's say, for example, we want to use this kind of a spiral. We just have to uh, double click our image inside of our assets window. And when we do, we're going to get this little preview window where we can create an image from it or set it as a background decal. And when I do this, and let me just close this down, you can see that we have a nice new kind of decal set in the background here. Uh, one of the things that we are exploring is using our decal in our game sessions to help uh, advance in some sort of uh, either mood setter or help depict an area. Uh, limiting down the number of windows that you have to have open. There's lots of different things that you can kind of do with this. Now, when we open up our options menu, you're going to see that we have our decal is now set to a custom image. We can turn it off uh, or any of the others that we might have loaded up. So we can kind of go through all of these. And let me just show you that, uh, especially inside of this art package, um, there's lots that we can do with this besides that as well. Uh, any of these images can be used as a lot of texture images. Uh, that we can use in some of our other creations and there's also lots of like cracks and so far and so forth uh, but we can also uh, use a lot of these paintings as like handouts and we can augment them in lots of different ways uh, so super fun so let me just pull up our decal art pack once again here and we have some uh, cool little uh, images in here uh, that we can kind of use and a lot of these are very uh, painterly uh, they're kind of designed in such a way uh, to be used in a multitude of fashions. I wanted to try to not to pigeonhole it too much. Uh, so let's say, for example, if we were to uh, create an image record from this. Uh, now we have a perfect kind of handout of a, of a particular scene and whatnot. We can add in all kinds of cool effects, uh, do lots of stuff with this. We can change its uh, colors. Uh, we can uh, augment it in many different ways if we want to change it. We certainly can. And we can also add in all of our effects layers and really begin to spruce these things up. So super fun stuff. Uh, so hopefully you guys can really experiment around with this uh, and do all kinds of cool stuff. There's a whole bunch of different uh, medieval type uh, weapons and whatnot. And I can expand these out to, to kind of show you in the preview here. And I tried to do uh, a multitude of different images. Here's a, a little uh, uh, Reaper. Uh, to kind of go across lots of different genres, uh, lots of different uh, um, possible use cases. Uh, so trying not to stick with a specific kind of fantasy theme, I think I did uh, maybe like a, can a, a tank uh, as well as a few other. Oh, yeah, like here's a battleship. And here we can set this as our background image. And let's just uh, move this to the side here. Let's shrink it down. And we can close down our options as well. So we have these nice uh, paintings that we can set into the background uh, or use them as, as I said, you can use them as a handout and do lots of fun stuff with it. Uh, we also have uh, lots of different items, so we can set these all as our background. And the way that this works is you're only going to have one custom background at a time. So you don't have to worry about this getting piled up and having lots and lots of different uh, events. Uh, and so here is one of uh, like a half-painted kind of area in here. of some rocks going through a, a desert terrain. Uh, I wish I had this with our game uh, a couple of Thursdays ago. And I did a bunch of uh, Old West ones, um, some kind of indiscriminate kind of stuff as well. 
uh, such as uh, mine cars and a lot of different items and whatnot, statues. Uh, a couple of space scenes, and you can always grab these and use these as backgrounds and whatnot. Oh yes, here's the tank. So a lot of fun stuff, and you guys are free to use these images uh, any way you wish to in your games. So hopefully that that'll add in a lot of different stuff. Oh yeah, we have like bloody handprints and uh, blood smears. Lots of fun stuff there. Uh, as I said before, lots of different textures. And we can actually use these in our image creations as well. Here's like chipped paint. And see if we uh, set this as our background image, you can see that this is going to make it all look like it's chipped up and distressed. Lots of little like camp scenes and campfires and whatnot. So I, I, my kind of intended purpose of this uh, was if, if maybe if the uh, group was setting up for a camp or whatnot, uh, you can change these on the fly and kind of help illustrate what's going on. We have some nice um, uh, cities. I think this is like a painting of France. I think, yes, it's France that I use for a... Uh, and a few other uh, cities and whatnot as well. So a lot of fun stuff. Oh yeah, we have like some ones for maybe like cyberpunk and these kind of uh, Tokyo streets at night. Uh, J-Rock, the blood splotches are gonna be in the new decal art pack. So FG decal art pack, uh, we have all of these nice blood splotches and things. So we can have like a nice uh, simple kind of blood splatter on our screen here, uh, or maybe even something a little bit more grotesque with some smears and whatnot. And you could also use these, as I said, as like a handout. This would be a great one like this uh, would be a great handout for like a bloody handprint that's found somewhere or something. Uh, so as I said, there's like a hundred or so images in there uh, that you can uh, use. And then if let's... Uh, switch over now to our uh, the GM symbols and this is more along the lines of more of a utility type uh, art package uh, all kinds of different numbers and letters and symbols and I'm actually going to do a brief demonstration today on how you guys can set up very quickly and easily your own hex maps uh, with nothing more than this one uh, art package uh, here let me uh, just switch this background off here and here we have a whole bunch of different symbols that we can use uh, for all of the different uh, images that we might want. Uh, and let's create a new image here. And I'm going to do this all right from scratch. Now, with no uh, layers at all selected, we don't have a lot that we can do inside of here, right? Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a painting layer. And this is just a quick little demonstration of how you guys can create uh, some very quick and easy uh, hex maps. And I'm going to instantly kind of change this over to a hex. Let's do uh, this one. And our size is uh, ir irrelevant, right? Like whatever we decide because we can zoom in and out as much as we want to. Uh, but I am going to bring down the opacity of this so it's just not super intrusive. And I'm going to go into my painting area. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick, um, uh, let's just do it at... Well, let's start off with maybe uh, a brown color. And I'm going to bring these down. This is going to be like our base color here. Or actually, you know what, let's just start off with uh, white. And this will make it a little bit easier here. So with white selected, uh, I'm going to increase the size of this. Uh, let's do it something like uh, 25 by 25. And I'm just going to pull out a very uh, simple kind of um, construct here. And maybe we'll do something like this. And now I can come back into uh, this particular area. And if I want to readjust my size of this, I certainly can uh, inside of the Layers tab. But with this selected, uh, I can now create an effects layer. And I'm going to do an adjust colors layer, and perhaps I want to, um, well, let's make it uh, rather green. And I'm going to bring down my brightness and find uh, the kind of tone that I want to create here. 
and then I'm going to be able to enable my mask and holding down uh, control, well not control, alt is what I want. Uh, holding down alt, I can now create any shape that I wish. And I can begin to uh, plot out all of the different colored areas that I might want to uh, have for my different hex maps. And so I can do all of my different colors and I can interact them together and do this and so on. And if I wish, I can even come in here uh, and adjust uh, the base color of this. Now, obviously, this is going to affect uh, my adjust colors layer as well. Uh, so we want to be a little bit uh, careful about how we do this. But uh, we can have a little bit of interaction. Maybe we want to do this base as, as like water. Or we could do anything that we wished here. Uh, now we can come into our assets area over here. And again, I'm going to create a new painting layer. And uh, let's just create this like this. I'm going to switch over to my stamp tool. Uh, I could also drag and drop these out if I wished and just kind of place these around. Uh, but these are all the types of symbols that you might find uh, to set up all of these different locations. And I've used a very, uh, very non-discriminant kind of um, uh, gray color here so that you have a lot of flexibility in what you want to do with all of the different uh, color variations and changes that you wish. So for example, if we want to change this color, uh, the boat color, for example, all the way to black, uh, we certainly can. And we can pretty much make these uh, any color we wish or opacity. So we have, uh, if you want to do color code these uh, based off of any sort of um, alliances or uh, factions, you can certainly do that. Uh, J-Rock, it's the, uh, the new decal art pack that came out uh, this last week. I believe it's called, uh, I can probably find you a link. Um, if you have the art subscription, obviously you get it for free. Oh, not for free, but it's included in the art subscription. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, let me just pull up the uh, store here. And here is a link to it on the uh, store page. And so just with uh, adjusting all of these different colors and doing all of these different things, uh, you can create all of your hex maps, uh, anything that you really desire out here. So uh, lots and lots of freedom here. And there's a ton of these different symbols as well. Um, lots of like dungeon entrances and uh, these can all be adjusted as well. We can, we can change these to whatever uh, increment we wish. Lots of fun things here. If we go back up into our, uh, we have all of these different uh, elements here. But let's go into our numbers, for example. We have all of the different, uh, I did three different styles, really. Uh, and again, these can be used in a multitude of different ways. Let's close this down. And let's jump over to our, um, well, let's use the House of Lament, for example, where we've set this up. And this is going to segue us right into our lighting discussion. Uh, we have some nice uh, low lit uh, areas in here. We can jump right in and I can show you how to uh, to add in, for example, candles here that's not going to interfere with our um, ambient light that's going on, our little dim light. Just close down my images for the moment. Uh, so let's say, for example, we want to create our own GM layer, right? We might call this GM layer. Much like that we get with any of our pre-created um, uh, modules in our maps will have uh, oftentimes a GM layer or a completely different GM map. Uh, so in here what I would do is I would switch over to my stamp tool and I might grab some of these elements. Maybe we'll grab this one, probably not zero, but we'll start with one. Uh, and we can start to place these all around. Uh, so if I was going to, let's let's turn off our player preview and get back over in here so that we can uh, maybe this is going to be our area one here. And I'll oftentimes use control to snap to the grid as I place these down. So we might have this here, and then we can switch over to our the second one. Or we can just type in two up here. I think we should be able to type in two. Guess not. But here we have our two, and we're going to stick to the same style. 
Uh, and again, we can just drag and drop these out as well. We don't have to do it in a painted layer. I'm just going to do it all in a painted layer uh, just so that I can have a little bit more control over the colors as a uh, unified kind of system here. And here is our three. Uh, so maybe we're going to put our three in through here. And this is all going to be on our GM layer so we can make sure that we keep it only visible to the GM. Uh, and again, we can come in here and switch over to our Layers tab, and we can make these any colors we wish. Uh, maybe we want to have them red so they stand out quite a bit from our backgrounds. Maybe a little bit brighter than that, and don't forget, we can always just drag and find the appropriate color that we want uh, up in here as well. So here is a bunch of different tools, and with the new um, Forge coming out, I think that this is going to become extremely helpful uh, for because currently we do not have any sort of text uh, tools inside of our image creation area in our image workspace. Uh, so this is going to help with that quite a lot as well. Uh, in addition to this, uh, all of these same kind of styles, and, and we also have, uh, let me go back in here to our numbers. Uh, we have uh, some futuristic kind of ones, a very standardized one, and then this one, which is a little bit more um, janky. It's got like a beat up kind of ring to it and, and some additional kind of elements to the uh, the numbers themselves. Uh, we can also uh, go into the base numbers, which is this is just the numbers themselves. Uh, and if we come all the way back up, we also have independent rings. So we can actually create these in any way we wish. Uh, lots of arrows and other shapes and whatnot that we might be able to use in particular instances. And we also have all of the letters available to us. And we can use these letters in a multitude of ways. I actually made a spaceship the other day and added the name of the spaceship with these letters right on the outside of it, making them semi-opaque and putting them to whatever color I wanted to. I just lined them up uh, and stamped them along uh, in a pretty good straight line uh, based off of what I was trying to create. So uh, pretty fun and uh, super helpful. And I think that these are going to be uh, easily used and help you guys create all of your different, um, I guess it's called uh, your key, right? Like the key of your maps and how that integrated into uh, the actual storytelling system. Much like the old style of the uh, way the modules used to be set up. So super fun there. So let's, uh, I'm just going to delete this for right now. I'm going to go back in and turn back on our player uh, viewpoint. So here we have this nice room. We set this up a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. I'm not sure. They all kind of blend together with me after a while here. Uh, we're going to switch over into our lighting tab. And here you can see we have these nice little soft ambient lights. Now when you can see that um, our ambient light sources are always going to uh, be additive. They're going to equal together. Now if we look at this, right, you're going to see that these uh, alphas are lowered. And this is a pretty important kind of aspect to this. So if I if I increase this all the way back up, right, to the default version of how our ambient light sources are created, then when our um, ambient, or should I say dim, I should stop saying ambient, I should say dim, when our dim light sources interact with each other, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to become an additive uh, bright light. Uh, so when you have two uh, dim light sources put together, uh, the way that this system interacts with each other, all the light sources are going to be cumulative. It's going to be additive, uh, making things brighter and brighter and brighter. So the more little dim areas we create that overlap, you can see that this is why I have one in one corner and one in the other. Uh, we have very little uh, interaction over here. But we can further this uh, by reducing our uh, opacity here. So let's bring this down to something like uh, 200, uh, just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to do the same. Bring this down to like 200. Now when they interact, you can see that they just still create a brighter light source, but not as much. Uh, it's going to take into to account uh, all of our opacity changes that we've created. So if we have uh, lowered the opacity, made these more transparent, and then uh, these interactions are going to be less uh, um, uh, I'm not going to say obstructive, but they're, they're going to be less uh, impactful, right? Uh, because if that's something that we're trying to avoid, we want to kind of uh, take that into account. So now that I've set these two up, maybe I want to add in uh, maybe these light sources in here, these candles. Uh, now, if I add in a normal candle light source, let me just uh, switch this over to a typical candle. 
and I drop this in here, you're going to see that we're going to get a lot of interaction here. And that's going to be a lot more than I wish. So how do I circumvent that? Well, the easiest way for me to do that is I can either get rid of my uh, dim light source here, but I'm actually going to get rid of my bright light source. I'm going to put that all the way down to zero because this is going to actually create a light um, or a dim area that is going to combine with the surrounding ones. And this is going to create uh, a brighter area than what is expected. So I don't have to worry about my bright light source whatsoever. And let's change this to 100. So we get this nice little kind of fall off here. And so here with 0 and 1 and this set, uh, we can do this again. I can do 0 and 1. And let's change that again. And I'm going to drop that right there. So now we can create inside of our little ambient sort, uh, not ambient, our little um, dim light lit area. And I can create all of these additional light sources using just dim light that it's going to now interact with that surrounding as if it was a bright light. So that's something that I definitely wanted to touch on. And you can see as we move these around, uh, we're going to get much more of the desired kind of impact that we wish. Uh, any sort of further kind of interactions that I want to change here, uh, I'm going to do that with my alpha. So if I move this out of the way, you can see that I can control this even further with my alpha channel. So you really do have the freedom to uh, uh, create any sort of lighting instance that you wish inside of any particular area. Uh, you just have to be a little bit aware of how the tools interact with each other and how they're most likely going to uh, uh, create the desired effect. So we'll take a little bit of playing around with a little bit of forethought and knowledge, but it's pretty simple once you wrap your head around it. Is there a general cave map available in FG? Uh, yeah, there's lots of cave maps. Yep. Now, uh, what kind of cave map are you looking for, J-Rock? Uh, inside, uh, I have two uh, cave art packs, actually. And the latest one, the cave, I think, let me just look it up here. Yeah, it's the Underground Map, uh, Underground 2 map pack. Now, uh, that is the latest one. And there's a whole bunch of different cave assets as well as some generalized kind of cave uh, creations. Here is uh, a preview map. Lots of cool cave walls, uh, floors, and stalactites, and still no, no stalagmites, right? Like, it's just stalactites. Which is it that comes up from the floor? Stalagmites. No tights. Tights come from the ceiling. Which would be hard for us to, uh, to show in this. But lots of walls and uh, different types of flooring effects. Uh, tons of decorations. We have mushrooms and lots of... Uh, roots, rocks, stalagmites, torches, and all kinds of different things. Uh, the the map the name of the map pack is uh, Underground uh, Underground Map Pack Two, I believe. Let's let's just double check here. Came out quite some time ago, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let's see here. Underground Map Pack 2. Here, let me grab you a link here. And there we go. Hey, DJ Break Time. Uh, so let's set this up. Uh, the other question was, is can you set up multiple ambient light sources like inside and out? Uh, and here we have this. Uh, we have an uh, ambient light source on the outside. Uh, so I can delete all of this lighting and we can set this up all over again. Uh, we can kind of go through and I'll show you up a, a couple of different ways that we can kind of go through this. Man, I'm having a difficult time talking today, so I apologize. Uh, so let's just jump in and uh, do this. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my regular ambient light on the outside. And I'm going to select all of these lights and I'm going to delete them. So we have no current lighting uh, whatsoever. And we can turn off our player view so we can actually kind of see. Uh, all of our um, uh, walls and all of our occluders are all set up. 
so we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, so we're going to jump right into our lighting systems and we can do this a couple of different ways. We're going to make sure that our, our, our uh, line of sight and our lighting is all enabled. Uh, Unity high res. So the question was, what's the resolution of the images? So uh, resolution is kind of a funny thing when we're talking about it in Unity because it is not really relative to the size of the image, which oftentimes it is uh, when we're talking about external devices, seeing as how it's usually a way for us to measure how well something is going to be printed or not, or what is the closest we can zoom into it. Um, in this particular scenario, it's a little bit different, uh, but uh, the resolution on everything is set up to be 100 um, PPI, um, if it were to be printed out, but again, that's kind of irrelevant when it comes into um, our fantasy grounds. It's more about uh, the pixel dimensions and what I tell it that it should be crammed into as far as the space goes uh, in accordance to what we have set up for our grid. Uh, there's no hard limit count, uh, as far as I'm aware of, uh, inside of FGU. If FGU can handle some uh, really large and rather complex kind of systems. The only thing that you really have to worry about inside of FGU is how much uh, bandwidth you want to take up when you're trying to send this to your players or otherwise interact with the image. I oftentimes use um, some really large uh, images or uh, creations, and I have never ran, run into a problem with it. All right, so uh, we have our typical kind of way that we can set up our outside ambient lighting source. Uh, we can jump over into our ambient light here. And we could just have to enable it. Uh, this has a whole bunch of presets, so we could do dawn, uh, we can do dusk. Uh, this is automatically going to generate us some shadows from our walls. So if we were to make this a little bit more prevalent, let me make these shadows a little bit longer here. Let's actually make these shadows uh, much darker so that you can really see them. And here you can see as I turn this around, and if we go back into our player view, you can see that this is going to be quite dark. So in our lighting system over here, uh, we have uh, all of these lights that are getting, um, all of these shadows that are being cast by the occluders. Uh, most of these are set up with wall occluders, so this is going to be uh, primarily a wall-created kind of shadow system. And you can see that uh, we have a mask already set up uh, from previously, uh, from the inside. So the inside is not getting uh, affected by any of this on the outside. We still can create shadows from it, however. So if I were to come in here and let's, uh, well, we can just change this back to its uh, typical pre preset here. So maybe we do dusk. And uh, we can increase this a little bit. Let's have some uh, darker shadows here. And we can adjust their length to whatever we wish, as well as the angle in which our sun is interacting with them. So this is the first and basic way that we can set up our outside ambient light. Uh, now, if I were to uh, remove the mask that we had created for the inside here, you can see that we can uh, enable or disable our mask really easily. Uh, once we have our mask enabled, uh, I can now just drag out um, areas in which I want this not to have any sort of effect on. So then I can just come in and I'm just going to do this very quickly and block out the interior here. And uh, maybe I'll leave this room as, no, we'll, we'll block this out. And if I hold down the Alt key, I can now uh, draw in any shape that I wish. And I'll do a really quick one of this rounded kind of... Uh, tower here. So now none of the uh, outside lighting is going to affect anything on the inside. Now this is all done just with our ambient lighting system. 
And now if we decide that we don't want to use that, we can set up our own systems as well. So let's just turn this off. And now I'm just going to grab a regular light source. I can set this to any color that I wish. Maybe if I want it to be something in the same vein as what I was doing before. Uh, and we don't want to have any flicker. Um, and I'm going to make this quite large. Let's make this 10 and let's make our dim area maybe like 25. And I'm just going to plop that down right over here. And we're going to go back in and turn this off. So I can see where I placed it. It's got to be on the map for us to actually affect the map here. Now this system, because I can, am able to either have it cast shadows or not, um, it's going to be very similar to the same way as setting up our ambient light source, but this allows us uh, to do it in any way that we wish, right? Like we can come in here, I can again, uh, I can get rid of all of my bright light for this if I so wish. So let's set it to zero. And so now I just have this ambient light source, and maybe I'm going to set this uh, to 50 or whatever I want it to be. And now when I come in and I turn this on, you can see that we just have this very subtle kind of lighting on the outside here. And I could also increase the brightness of this. If I want this to not be affected by the walls in any way, I can have it so that it's just like this huge ambient light source that kind of comes through everywhere. And again, I can uh, turn it down. I can change any of these parameters any way that I wish. And we can also change these falloffs so that's more of a gradient from one to the next. Now, by uh, moving this around, right, like let's say, for example, if I want this to be kind of this ambient light source uh, that fills in many of the areas, uh, in order for me to kind of mimic the way that our ambient light source is set up, I would have to do this with several different lights. Right, this is not going to work in exactly the same way because it's not going to fill in all of those gaps. As you can see, if I turn the shadows back on, uh, if I were to grab, and let's grab actually somebody from our combat tracker here. Move some of these over. I guess I can just close down my assets window for right now. And if I grab, let's say, Lisa, for example, and she's now uh, in the middle of this uh, map, not the middle, but the bottom. And you can see uh, from her perspective, uh, she's not going to be able to see anything on this side. And the way that the shadows are going to be cast from this particular light source are going to be relative to where it is here. Now, it should also be noted that if I move this off the screen, we can still get a lot of effects. So if you want to uh, create a your own unique kind of a real lighting system, uh, you can do that by moving this very far from the actual system itself. Uh, maybe we'll change this to 100. You can see that that is about the distance that it's going to be going to there. And let's maybe make it 200. And now I can create a much more kind of uh, realistic uh, scenario, if I so wished. And we can even create our own reflective lights on the other side and do all kinds of stuff. But uh, by far the simplest method for doing all of these kinds of things, you can see as I move this around, uh, this will obviously affect uh, all of the different systems. I think I still have uh, Lisa selected, so we're only going to see what Lisa sees. As you can see, uh, we're going to get all of the different effects as we move this around. But I'm going to delete this for right now. And we'll turn back on our regular ambient system here. Uh, this is much easier for us to work with, especially when you have an indoor and outdoor scenario. Uh, let's see, we have a question here from Twitch, from Shattered Saint. Uh, will using a mask prevent the walls of lower layers casting shadows on a surface layer when ambient light is on? So the mask is going to prevent anything in that particular area. 
your ambient light source uh, and your masking of your ambient light uh, is irrelevant on layers. Uh, it happens much higher up in the uh, hierarchy. So regardless of, it's not a layer dependent uh, system. And therefore, if we were to create our ambient light source outside um, and then mask in here, no matter what, how many layers we have, everything on the inside is going to be masked. Hopefully that answers your question there. And now what we can do is uh, begin to set up all of our interior lights. So let's say, for example, we want to create a, uh, a complete ambient light inside of the building that is separate from the outside. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to drop a light in the middle here, and I'm going to turn off cast shadows. I'm going to select it and turn off cast shadows. And you can see now I can illuminate the entire inside of this. This will obviously affect uh, all of this out here. And you can see that this is just a dim light. So I have a lot more control over it. And if I so wish, I can just lower down my opacity to have it affect in any way that I want to. Now, because this is no, no longer casting shadows, it's no longer restricted uh, by my walls. Uh, so I'm able to just kind of place this and it's going to bleed in everywhere. So if I wanted to have a kind of very subtle ambient light source throughout the entire area, uh, I can easily do that. Now again, it should be noted that this will affect my shadows, but you can see it's not going to overpower it because it is a very uh, dim kind of lighting. And maybe we'll make it um, uh, something, well actually, you know what we could do? We could actually make it uh, the same color as our shadow. So if I came in here and I grab uh, this hexadecimal code, I can come back in and I can grab this light and hit control V. And now what I'm actually going to do is increase this uh, opacity and I might even, uh, we can increase all of this as well until we get it to a nice layer uh, level here. And now we have this, and uh, hopefully this is uh, able to be seen quite well through the stream, but uh, now we have this really nice kind of uh, dim lighting that is uh, throughout the entire interior here. And you can see it has no effect on the exterior as well. And we can just control uh, how much of this is seen uh, with our color system here. So if I wanted to be, to be uh, just a regular kind of white light, uh, I'm able to do that as well. But remember, this is all dedicated to our dim lighting. And so therefore, we're not going to have the same kind of problems that we will have by having any sort of bright light as well. Again, if I want to create some nice little light sources and have this all throughout here, uh, I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing because remember dim and dim together is going to make a bright light. So if I make this a uh, nice and small, put a flicker on it, uh, and then we can just drop this uh, in here. And now we can start to create all of our little uh, areas here. Maybe we want to have a little bit of fire uh, coming out of here and I will come in. Whoop. I can come in and adjust these uh, individually as well. So maybe I'll make this like three, uh, lighting up the entire room in here. And we want to make sure that these ones do cast shadows, so we can just make sure that we have that clicked on. Well, let's say we have a question from YouTube, from Ivarden Sphere. Uh, let's see, uh, will the code be getting optimized as to not be a massive crush on the video card? Uh, I believe that there has been a lot of uh, optimizations up so far. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where it's at right now, or if you're having a particularly difficult time um, with your graphics card, you might want to put a post in the forums. Um, like right now, my graphics card is running, let me just check. 
uh, I'm at uh, 15%. And my, well, that's total. So let's see, just for, and most of it is OBS. So my GPU is at uh, 3% for uh, Fantasy Grounds. And my CPU is at 1.9%. So I guess depending on the system and uh, all of that, uh, there's a couple of different things that you can do if you're having problems with your graphics card, if you're an older system and whatnot. Um, there is a VSync option uh, as well as an image control uh, for your chat commands. So um, inside of your, and this is f per uh, system basis. So this is going to be for your client or for um, the host as well. So if you type in uh, VSync, uh, whoop, slash VSync, uh, and then I believe it's numbers uh, zero through three. So if you do zero, uh, it'll make it um, an unlimited refresh rate. Uh, and then if you do uh, vsync one, I believe it's the default of your system. Uh, and then two is half of that. And then three is half of that, so a quarter. So if I were to, for example, do uh, vsync and I do three, uh, you're going to notice as I move this around, it's going to get a little bit choppy because my refresh rate has been significantly reduced. And that should greatly improve any sort of performance that you might have uh, dependent on your system. Oh, let's see, Shatter Saint says, um, you have a ruined temple uh, with a dungeon underneath, and you're getting an outline of the dungeon on the ground outside. Yes. So if you have, um, there's an easy way to get around that. And I can kind of show you that uh, uh, right now, dependent on the system. So if I get this correctly, if I get this correctly, uh, your system is like this. You have it underground, but your ambient light source is casting a shadow. And that shadow is being able to be seen. Um, so let's say, for example, let me move this out of the way. And we'll get into our assets here. Let's go to the 2019 art pack. And I'll grab a cup, uh, maybe just like a simple background here. So you're going to put this on top here, and we're going to make this uh, whatever size our other one is, 30 by 33. We'll just make it 30 by 30 to make it simple, and then I'll just stretch it out. So I removed my mask. Uh, and if we look in here, we have all of our different light sources showing through and our shadows from underneath. So is this the, uh, the problem that you're having, uh, Shattered Saint? And let's say, for example, if I were to come in here, and let's just hide this for a moment. And I will, uh, again, enable my mask here. And let's just draw out a quick little mask in through here. Looks like I had inadvertently added another layer for my mask, so let's just fix that. All right, and now let's turn our ground back on and get back into our regular play mode. So you might have something like this. Yeah, okay. So, and you want to, um, so any sort of lights that you have down underneath in your dungeon itself, you're going to want those on a separate layer. So if I, if I come into here, and let's go back into our layers, our, our lighting tab here, and I'm just going to delete these. 
so if I do have these on a separate layer, uh, I'm going to I'm going to create a new layer and put all of my different lighting in through here so that I can turn it on and off. Uh, so let's let's hide uh, this for a second and I'm going to create um, a new independent. Uh, this is going to be a walls layer, but I'm actually going to use it. I'm going to just call it lights. And I'll drop in a couple of different lights in here. And let's make these uh, a bit brighter, okay, so just so we can see them. Uh, because these are on a separate layer, and I'll show you this, I can turn this layer off and it will turn those lights off. So if I have this attached to my uh, dungeon layer down here, and I'm not going to have any sort of problems with it, right? Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that we can handle this kind of scenario. So let's turn this off. The first and easiest way that I'm going to handle this is I'm going to create a folder. And this is going to be my dungeon. And I'm going to grab all of the different lights and everything that I have that's going to be in my dungeon. And when I turn this off, uh, you're going to see that the only thing left is my mask. So uh, none of that stuff is going to be, uh, uh, none of those shadows are going to be uh, pushed out from there. The one thing that I can't get rid of is my ambient light source uh, with the mask itself. Uh, so what I would probably do in this kind of scenario, especially if I had like a building on top and then uh, an element that's underneath, uh, what I would probably do is not use a masking at all. I would turn off this mask, and that way I could turn this all off and not have any sort of interactions whatsoever. And I would either use a different type of lighting source above rather than the ambient one. Uh, but we can also turn off our shadows from this uh, if we want to have like some, some different kind of effects, depending on what you have up top and how much you have off of this. But whatever you hide uh, is going to hide all of the different elements as well, right? So um, interacting with the different systems is going to be dependent on your way that you actually have your map set up. But the integration between them all and how they interact um, takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can certainly figure out the best way to handle your particular scenario, um, which I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that might be without actually seeing your map. But anything that you hide uh, also is going to hide all of its functionality from lighting systems, from uh, occluders, and all of that. So you can very quickly kind of uh, change the way that all of this is interacted with uh, by uh, grouping everything that's going to be working together as a unit into a folder and then using that folder uh, in conjunction with it. The other thing that you can also do is um, you can use other lighting systems to interact with your shadow systems. So if you're in a, a situation where, let's say, for example, I want to soften these shadows, uh, our wall occluders are, are hard edged. Uh, but I can also come in here and create my own. Uh, let's uh, create. I'm actually going to go back into here. Let me grab uh, this hexadecimal code with control C. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to plug it into here. And I can drop this in anywhere. And uh, let's make this uh, whoop, I just want that to be five. And you can see what I can actually do is start to create. And again, I'm going to take away uh, this, but I can begin to soften up these shadows. And if I want to have, uh, let's say if I do want to start to illuminate these shadows all together, and I can control this again with my uh, opacity. And by changing the size of this, uh, I might want to keep this uh, similar in size to whatever I have here. But maybe I make this 5 and this 5, uh, 5.5. And let's take the flicker off. And we can do a nice gradual kind of thing from all of these different elements. 
We might want to put shadows back on so we don't interfere. And let's put this all the way back up so you can kind of see. So now what I can do is I can actually start to control uh, how these shadows are interacted with, right? If I make these the same, I'm going to get a 100% fall off, um, uh, a zero fall off on the edge. So it's better if we keep these. Maybe I do this. something like this, and then I bring down the opacity, and I find the perfect level here of where I start to interact without really affecting the surrounding lighting. So you can do a lot of really cool things uh, interacting with the light system and how they interact together. Yeah, you bet, Shattered Saint. And there's a there's a again there's a multitude of ways that you can handle that depending on the particular circumstance. Uh, and uh, so, if you run into problems, feel free to reach out, and and uh, I can certainly help you out uh, figuring out the best way to kind of set that up. Uh, do you guys have any other questions about the lighting, the lighting system, and how they interact? The other thing that should be noted is that if your uh, light sources that you create are static, if you create them and they're not going to move, they take very little uh, resources. So any of these lights, uh, even though that we could put uh, tons and tons of them around, uh, as long as they're static, as long as they stay in the same spot and aren't going to be moved around, they will have very little impact on the system itself. So feel free to use uh, a bunch of different lighting systems, right? So if we were to come back in here again, And let's grab these and move these back over into these areas. And here we have a uh, lots of interaction here. And I'm just going to grab, uh, let's get back in here and add our mask again. Do that really quickly. So here we have all of these, and these are all set up exactly the same parameters, so I can select them all at the same time and edit all three of these at once. So if I were to reduce again the brights down to nothing, uh, you can see that as they interact with each other, we can get a lot of cool kind of ambient situations here. Uh, two might be a lot, but let's see. We'll do another one. And I'm going to maintain the same kind of color consistency here. And we'll drop one right there. So here we have, oh, I didn't mean to create another one. Or another one. So here we have all four of these lights, and they're all stacked pretty close to each other. We're not using any sort of bright light whatsoever. We're only using dim lights. Uh, and this is going to be great for us. Uh, the highest that they go is two, but maybe we want to bring it down to like one. You can see that that's a little bit too much. But we might want to change our fall off if we want to have it a little bit more of a consistency there. And we're going to create a little bit of an area in here. Again, if we go to two, you can see that it's going to drop us up there, but dropping, making our fall off back to 100. So our fall off is how much it degrades over time. At 100%, it is a um, it is the, the highest amount of gradient that we can create. Uh, and if we bring it down to zero, it's going to be perfect circles. Uh, this is really great for us if or it goes down to one. 
Uh, this is really great for us if we have to know exactly how far a lighting system goes or where a transition into bright light becomes uh, for particular types of rules. Uh, so make sure that you are aware of that as well. Uh, okay, so we have a couple of questions here. Oh, so we have a question uh, about uh, editing walls. So shoot, go ahead and uh, ask whatever question you'd like. Uh, let's see. I like to populate maps with candles or torches with flicker on them. Is there a chance to get some kind of random flicker? Uh, not currently, but perhaps in the future we will get some randomized uh, flickering. Yeah, so the, the trick with that is, right, so we have flicker on all of these, all set to 100. All you have to do is uh, select them independently and set them to uh, random numbers. And this is going to create a much more kind of randomized uh, flickering pattern. So let's see, question, what you just said about lights, if you don't move them, they don't drain resources. Does that count for flashing strobe lights? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, Spencer. I'm not exactly sure. As far as I'm aware, um, I'm sure that flashing and flickering and pulsing all take up more resources than just the static uh, stationary light source with none of that. But uh, as far as I'm aware that uh, uh, a light source, as long as it does not move, like a, if it's not a light source that's attached to a token or so on, then it has it takes up much less resources. So just to demonstrate the different amounts of uh, flickers that you can do here. So I'm going to go back and let's just add in, uh, well, let's just do the default uh, candle here. So our default candle is this. I'll just drop it over here. Should have a shadow on it. And here it is set to 100. And then I'll, I'm going to put a couple uh, around here, right? And you can see that they do kind of all pulse pretty much at the same time. So if I do this one at 100, but if I drop this one down to like 59, we can leave that one at 100. Uh, we'll drop this one down to like something like this. And you can get a much more kind of randomized flickering that is happening. Now, because we have set all of these ones up over here, just with dim lighting, now if we come in and we decide that we want to do a larger kind of ambient light source inside, and we'll turn off our shadows for this, maybe we'll make this a little bit uh, greener so that we can see the interaction a little bit easier. You can see we're not going to truly kind of uh, uh, interfere with what we've created over here, right? So all I have to do to make an adjustment at this level is I will select these again, and I'm just going to drop down the opacity. And I'm going to find a good little area in here where uh, these are going to give off the amount of light that I want. Oh yes, that's a good pro tip, Dark Mantle. If you have over overlapping flashlights, use prime numbers so they will never sync up. All right, do you guys have any other questions about this stuff uh, before we move on? And feel free, uh, if you guys have any sort of uh, issues or other things that you have come across, make sure you throw, it doesn't have to be related to lighting, uh, and uh, uh, I, I believe that there was a question earlier about walls. 
Uh, so if you have a question specifically about walls, uh, I'm not sure what you're seeing has been changed lately, but uh, if, if you found something, uh, please throw it into chat. I'm more than happy to go into some of the occluder creation and whatnot as well. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions, uh, but I'll try to keep an eye on chat. Sometimes I get too invested in what I'm working on and I kind of lose track of chat, uh, but I'll try not to, to do that. Oh, so we have a question from Azurbius. What is the best way to not block line of sight, but make it seem to fall off uh, when looking up and downstairs. And uh, are you look are you thinking about using like an occluder to do it? Or do you want to just kind of limit the lighting uh, in a particular area? Uh, one of the cool things about the lighting system is that we can actually create darkness instead of lights. So for example, uh, let's uh, turn off our uh, well, actually, let's go into our ambient light source here. And we're going to remove our mask. So we have lots of light in here. And we're going to drop our shadows down to nothing. And here we have a nice uh, set of stairs that are going down into the depths. We also have some stairs here that are going up. So we'll do both of these. We'll set them both up. Uh, you can see what we have set up for occluders already. We have our walls, our doors, and our windows set up, and that's it. So now coming over into our lighting system, we still have our lighting system on. We just have gotten rid of our shadows being cast from our outside ambient light. Uh, but we have everything else set up, so we can totally jump right in here and do this pretty, pretty easily. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to create a new light, but this time I'm going to create a darkness. And I can just drop this right in here, right? Now I should be able to. Well, this is a little bit too big for us. And I can also make it cast shadows. And let's drop this down to like one and two. And so I can create this little darkness thing uh, in through here as you can see. Now this is going to be affected by other light sources. So if I were to grab this, for example, and I start to move this in, this is only um, no dim light. Well, let's, let's create a new light source that we can kind of uh, interact with this with. And this is a great thing because if we use our, our darkness, uh, it also blocks uh, player vision, right? So if I were to grab a token, let's grab something from the combat tracker. And if we get back into our play mode, when he opens this up, uh, you can see uh, this is going to not only, uh, he's been in this room before, uh, I'm assuming, because that's why we have like this kind of uh, interaction. But you can see that it also blocks his vision throughout there, right? So he can't see into the other room. All of our other light sources are all set up here. Let's... Uh, Let's make sure we don't have him click selected anymore. Uh, so we, we have this nice little light source in here that we can actually use to darken up these areas, right? So if we want to, uh, let's say, for example, if I want to make sure that this is shrouded in darkness, uh, and then we can come back in and grab our little buddy John. And when he opens up this door, he can, he, we can actually create an area in which that he is going to have a difficult time kind of seeing down into. Adding into the kind of ambience of him like disappearing down into the darkness here. I think he has dark vision, which is one of the reasons why he can see in there. Let's see.
Nope. But here he is. Uh, and so you can actually set up uh, anti lights in the same way. But if I don't want to do it that way, right? If I don't want to, if I'm going to do it just with occluders, if I just want to do it with occluders, and I want to, uh, let's say, for example, um, if I was if I was doing this from the other, well, let's go to the other, the other set of stairs here. So let's say, for example, these are going up to the second floor, and I want them uh, to be kind of uh, set up in a particular type of way where uh, this area up here might not be able to be seen or uh, some other way. If I wanted to give a good visual kind of representation using the occluders to do this, uh, I would probably use uh, a pit. I think I would turn off, uh, I would probably keep is toggleable, but turn off movement blocking. Oh, let's see, we have a question here. Uh, so the uh, question from Facebook from Tom, uh, let's see, can I just buy the, this actually is part of um, maps that I made for the new uh, Ravenloft, uh, Van Richter's Guide to Ravenloft. These are, this is the House of Lament. So I made some, uh, remade the maps that they did because they came very uh, basic. And so uh, this is included in that. So if you buy uh, the new Van Richter's Guide through Fantasy Grounds, uh, you will have access to these maps. I did all of the, uh, I believe there's five of them for the House of Lament. Uh, let's see, from um, YouTube. So I play with a group of six to eight, uh, and this program chugs when the DM moves any tokens around the map. Uh, I'm not sure that's uh, that's something that I don't really have anything to do with, uh, Christopher Kirk. That would be more along the lines of uh, John and Carl. And so if you're having an issue like that, uh, you can certainly put that on the forums, and I'm sure that they'll be happy to help you with that. Uh, or in our Discord. Yes, uh, the, the darkness should uh, uh, block dark vision. It should. Okay, so using occluders uh, to create this kind of effect, I'm actually going to be using a pit in this particular example. And one of the great things about a pit is you can see into a pit, but not out of a pit. I use this a lot for elevation as long as well as the terrain uh, and a couple of different aspects. So uh, I'm actually going to build a pit right around this room. And I'm going to just leave out uh, anywhere along the stairs where I think that the vision is going to start to get obscured, right? So here I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to build it right along the edge of the room here. And maybe I'm going to go right here. Uh, and maybe we'll go right across. Maybe we'll say here is where our pit will get divided. And again, as always, this is going to require a little bit of forethought and a little bit of uh, planning. And I'm just going to do it there uh, just for like uh, really basic kind of uh, interaction here. So here we have this pit. And if we see it from our player's perspective, you can see that uh, we can see everything inside of our room. Uh, but once we get to a certain amount, we cannot see up in the stairs. And then as I move up into the stairs themselves, uh, I can now see inside of here. I left it toggleable so that I could turn that on and off if I so wished. 
but I could do this without having a toggleable either. So uh, this is a really simple kind of example of, let me just delete that, of how you can kind of interact with your environment. You can do it uh, several different ways with the different occluders. Uh, and I can do exactly the same thing over here as well. So maybe if we turn off our line of sight, I mean our uh, lighting system and we just have line of sight. Here we have uh, the same scenario here, right? And so what I would actually do is if this platform, we could maybe see but not above it if we had a different type of set of stairs. Or maybe we could build a set of stairs on the outside that makes a little bit more sense. Why don't we do that? So perhaps where we had this set of stairs is going to lead up into a large platform. Uh, maybe this set of stairs goes up a long distance. And we want to not be able to see what's up here, but we do want to be able to uh, see when we're on the ground and when we're up top as well. Again, what I would do is I would use this. I'm going to turn off the uh, toggleable aspect of this now. And what I would do, uh, and I'm just going to do part of this uh, simply here. So let's say we have all of this is all part of the area in which our player is located. And as this person moves around, he's not going to be able to see what is above the stairs. But once they reach that point, then everything becomes visible. Uh, the interaction between the the pits and the terrain occluders, you can do lots of fun stuff. In addition to that, we have illusionary walls and windows and all of these things uh, interact lots of different ways. We should put a big blood splat on the ground, shouldn't we? We got to make it as spooky as possible. Oh no, there's blood right outside the door. All right. Well, do you guys have any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, I'm going to refresh my water and my beverages, uh, and then I'll be right back. Um, but if there's any other questions involving these, feel free, throw it out now, and uh, we'll uh, jump right in there. Yeah, just a flesh rune. Um, so you have the Ultimate Unity account. Uh, where can you get assets like this? We have a, an art subscription. It's $5 a month or $50 a year. You get access to all of our in-house uh, art uh, created items. I release uh, usually three art packs or three art um, products a month. Uh, let's just see here how many we're up to now. So currently we have uh, in that, or, or you can just purchase them on the store. But uh, as so far we have it looks like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, 
uh, 34, uh, 34 different art products inside of that uh, subscription already. Uh, so you can get access to all of those. It's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of images. Not hundreds of thousands, but thousands of images. Sure. Uh, yeah, so it's four ninety nine a month. Uh, here is a link to the... Uh, And here are all the different products. And so really what we do is I try to do one new theme and uh, two map packs or art packs uh, per month. Yeah, I tried my, my, try my very hardest to make it as good a deal as possible. I believe Zardak, uh, you can you if you create your own original uh, images with the art packs, I believe that you will be able to sell them on the Forge, which will be coming out shortly. I believe that's that's the way it will work. Uh, I do not believe that you're there's there's no way to export them, uh, and anyone who uses any sort of art pack that you create will also need to own those art packages. That's true. If you stop the subscription, you no longer have access to them. Yes, you get all of my past uh, art creations. So it's, uh, I believe there's 33 uh, products out so far. And we release um, two new art packages uh, per month and one new theme usually. Yeah, you bet. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to take a really short break. I'm going to get some more tea and uh, fill up my water. Uh, just be a few minutes, uh, and then we'll be right back at it. We're going to dive into doing some uh, some great um, some great art creation here uh, for the remainder of the time. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, throw it into chat. I'm more than happy to go down any sort of rabbit hole, and we can figure anything out. I'm sure. All right, so I will be right back.
All right, and we're back. Thanks for waiting, everyone, while I uh, took a little refresher there. Stretch my legs for a moment and readjusted everything. Got my beverages. And so here we go. Uh, so we're going to go into some actual uh, image creation stuff now that we've gone through a little bit of that technical stuff. A little bit of that technical stuff. Uh, and I actually want to dive in and do a little bit of work with some of these new uh, GM symbols. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that I have uh, been working on and kind of figuring out. Uh, I'm always trying to push the boundaries of what we can do inside of FGU. Uh, I believe that I have in our uh, regional map packs Let's see here. Here is, uh, let's see, old style stuff, things that we've worked on in the past. I'm not sure why that's in there. Uh, let's just open up our, not our library, our assets. And we'll move on over to our regional map pack two. And we have this pre-made uh, regional map. I'm just going to create an image from that. So if you guys are unaware, let's just turn off our lighting system. We're not going to really need it for this. Uh, if you guys are unaware that we, we do have a whole bunch of regional map packs as well, that you can create all of your different ones. I've got a couple of different styles. Uh, and uh, so you can create... Um, Lots of different uh, types of continents and uh, build your world really from the from the ground up, uh, and uh, lots and lots of um, interest in recent times in uh, going back to like hex crawls and whatnot, um, and so that's one of the reasons why we've been working on uh, some of these different uh, elements here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop this down uh, to something very small, right? Uh, so this is a 10 by 10 grid system with our hex map. You can see when we zoom out, we don't see it at all. And when we zoom in, uh, we can see it quite well here. I'm going to drop down my opacity here a little bit. And we can also change the color of this. I'm going to move it down to uh, black, I think. Just so that we have a pretty good understanding about where everything is. And we can just drop this down a little bit more. So here we have all of these different uh, elements. Oh, and one huge map of all of the Forgotten Realms. Sure. I'll get right on it. It shouldn't take me too long. So here in this type of environment, right, we, we might want to create this massive, uh, maybe we're going to start down on this uh, particular island. Um, and included in this map pack, too, uh, are all of these cool little decals and whatnot that you can put around. Uh, if we go into the regional map pack, uh, here we have our decorations. We have uh, all kinds of decorative elements that we can place uh, as well as like ships and sea monsters and filigree and all kinds of stuff. Um, we can also do banners and so on. So this is a really f one of one of my favorite ones to kind of mess around with and just play with. Uh, here we have a question from uh, YouTube. Uh, if you buy the Crest Art Pack, can you put the Crest on top of a map and import it to FGU? Let's say I have regional map and I made outside of FGU. Can I make a Crest on top of it? Yep, yeah, you sure can. Uh, once you, once you uh, import something, let's say, for example, because this is one image, right? Once you've imported something, and I can kind of demonstrate this right now. Let's, let's go up to the Crest Art Package. Uh, and maybe I want to build a crest and place this uh, maybe as a seal up in the corner uh, or anywhere along those lines. So in here, our backgrounds are going to be these these things that we can kind of set uh, all of our stuff onto. Uh, maybe I'll just grab uh, something like this. And then we have all kinds of different um, decorations and whatnot. So why don't we grab like a shield? we got to make it classic. Uh, we'll do something along these lines, and I'm just going to put this right in the center here. 
and maybe we'll add in uh, some of these elements or maybe we'll actually go with a little bit more of a decorative kind of feel here. And we can add in some different kind of elements as well. Maybe we'll do like, a, or maybe we'll do like a crossed axe and a crossed hammer. And we can place in something else. Oh, well maybe we'll do, uh, we gotta do like a helmet or something over the top and perhaps we will do a crown uh, at the very top here. Uh, included in this also is some nice effects. So if I wanted to do a nice little uh, shine in behind this and I'll drop that down underneath. I might even put it uh, all the way back in behind here. And if I so want, I can kind of enlarge that a bit. And what I would do now is I would make a new folder and I would call this a crest or whatever I wanted it to be. And I can grab all of these things. Oh, looks like our uh, shift select is a little bit askew. I'll have to plug that in. And now I can move this all as in one unit. Uh, I can also, uh, if this particular time, I can also change its size. All is one unit. And I can even come in and if I wanted to drop down its opacity, maybe make it a little bit uh, less intrusive on my map. So yeah, you can certainly do that. Oh, the entire planet of Toril. Yeah. Ooh, Call from the Deep. Yeah, that is a nice. Yeah, you're so welcome. So you're more than, uh, yeah, you are able to uh, interact with all of the, once you import something into Fantasy Grounds Unity, uh, you then have access to all of the different layered systems and everything in between. So uh, you can add in as many images as you want to. You can also use any of the effects layers and do lots of fun stuff. Uh, but let's get over into the uh, decal, the uh, not decal, the GM symbols. Uh, because what we're actually going to do is we're going to start to uh, set up this as like a hex map. Uh, and we can do this in a very fine scale once we set up our scale, right? So uh, one of the cool things that we can do inside of Fantasy Grounds Unity is actually set up our distance uh, and all of the different kind of parameters that we want to interact with here. So let's say, for example, if I wanted to make sure... Um, I don't know what the average size of a hex is, and let's say like the old Greyhawk maps or along those lines. Uh, but let's say we wanted to do it a mile across, right? Let's say we wanted to do maybe like a mile. We can leave our multiplier as one, uh, and then we can just type in here mile. And then when we do any sort of interaction here, let's say we, we come in and we want to measure a distance here. You can see that that's going to be 21 miles for us. Uh, or perhaps we want to set this up so each grid is a five mile. Uh, you can see that that's going to update. That's 105 miles. Uh, so regardless of how we've set up our um, our map itself when we do our creation process, we can always change uh, how this interacts with that situation in any sort of way that we wish. Uh, so what do you mean by subhex? Do you mean, well, all I have to do is I could change this down to one, for example, or I could make it two. And so I can have these hexes as small as I wish. So if I was doing a 10 by 10 um, typical uh, hex grid here, uh, and if I wanted to make it half that, I can just do it, whoop. I can just do it on the fly. Uh, without needing to have a sub-hex kind of category. I can break it down into further uh, sub-hexes. But let's say I decide that I'm going to have it keep it at 10 because that's going to be a pretty good uh, um, indicator of maybe that this is... Uh, and I might even change this to like a 10, 10 mile multiplier. So we have about 200 miles across there. That seems about right. 
Uh, so if these were 10 miles across, uh, these mountains and whatnot would seem pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah, sure. Right. Um, so what you can actually do is instead of doing that, uh, let's say, for example, we decide that we're going to make this uh, 50 by 50. Uh, I can then come in here to my simple map, for example. And if I want to make this 100 by 100, I certainly can. Or I can even make it 200 by 200. And you can see the visual quality does not change on the map whatsoever. Uh, it is a really a, a, an inventive kind of system where all of this interacts together. And now with my grid at 50 by 50, I can make it down into 10 by 10. Uh, and you can see that I can, without having to create a subsystem, uh, I can just change some of these parameters and I can get as intricate as I wish. <clears throat> Excuse me. So therefore, um, instead of we could, I could uh, probably create uh, some some larger areas, especially if you wanted to get into some other dynamic stuff. Uh, we could we could create borders of countries and do all kinds of things. But I think that this is going to work for us for right now. So let's let's start off in this little area down here. We have this this nice little area down here, uh, and let's increase this. So let's do 25 by 25 for right now. Uh, each 25, uh, we can change uh, the distance multiplier, but let's keep it at 10 miles. Uh, let's give each uh, hex maybe like a 10 mile uh, area in there. We can go into our symbols here and we can start to pull out uh, all of the different areas and begin to populate this. Um, and I'm going to actually do this, uh, I think, in a painting layer. Uh, just to make sure that uh, I try to keep everything in one particular layer, uh, it's just going to be a little bit easier for me to manipulate. And again, you can see that our uh, crest is all done there. We can make different crests if we wanted to um, for different kingdoms and place them around. So maybe this is going to be the crest of this kingdom. We can even use that as the capital. Uh, but let's say we're going to go out here and we want to say uh, some very prominent kind of location. Let's make a new painting layer. And we can just call this uh, symbols for right now. We might want to get more detailed with this information uh, as we go. Uh, and I'm just going to just drop this right in here. I'm not going to worry about uh, the lighting system yet. And I can make these uh, whatever size that I wish. I tend to make them twice as big as the one that they represent just for easy access. Uh, but we could also uh, make them one by one uh, and maybe change this to 50 by 50 again. We want to do like symbols at a particular size. So maybe out here we have a nice little um, lighthouse and maybe we're going to put some other lighthouses around. And because I'm not going to worry too much about what color I'm using uh, currently on this particular system, uh, I can go back in and change the colors of all of them at the same time. Uh, one of the things that we could definitely do is use our uh, symbols as a um, way of identifying different uh, factions and whatnot. Uh, but let's say I'm just going to start to place a couple of lighthouses around. Maybe we've got one here, maybe one here. And you can see what I can do is now come in and we can adjust these colors. Uh, maybe we want them to be red or maybe we want them to be black. And this gives us a very interactive kind of map. As you can see, we can zoom right in here. We can see our little symbols. Uh, if we want to add in, uh, if we want to make them a different color, we certainly can. Uh, maybe we want to make them green. or blue. Uh, also, if I feel like the, these are too small, uh, you know, I can always uh, duplicate the size or double the size, not duplicate them. And you can see that this is going to update to whatever color that I have already set the layer to go in. And we can also actually probably indicate the size of different elements by the size of the icon as well, or maybe like something of importance.
So maybe we're going to add in uh, some castles into this area. Uh, this makes me want to uh, set up a like a whole kind of risk game inside of Fantasy Grounds. I think that would be so much fun. And perhaps we want to do uh, some boats along the docks here. Ooh, not 23. Along the docks, along the coast. And maybe we want to do some additional places. We could use these as like towns, different places of interest. This is where I would start to really begin to world build. Well, let's do a cemetery. And at any time, if we do something we don't want, we can just remove it. Maybe we want to do a cemetery over here behind this place. And we might do some ruins about. Stables. We got to have a skull somewhere, right? Maybe we want to move this just out of the side here, somewhere where it's not going to interfere as much. Nope, don't want it there. We got to do some windmills, right? Make sure we have the correct layer selected. Well, that's a great question, Dark Mantle, and that is something that is on the wish list. Uh, so if that's something that you would like, uh, certainly go on over and vote for it. Because I would love to have uh, some text-based elements in here as well. And because I'm doing this all on a layer, I can now come back in and I can adjust these colors in any way that I wish. I can even come in and adjust their opacity if I wanted to. Let's make them black for right now. Oh, I keep doing that. I think I would use the cross swords for like places where uh, there might be conflict. We got a nice spider. Oh yeah, we gotta do some like uh, let's do uh, crossed axes. Uh, what you can do, Dark Mantle, instead of having uh, text on the map is uh, obviously use notes and story entries and uh, all those sorts of things. Uh, 
I wonder if I would probably use the the shield for like fortifications, maybe like forts and things. Areas that have a lot of defensive structures. We could build our own little uh, tent tent towns here. So as you can see, uh, in a very short amount of time, you can start to populate all kinds of different stuff uh, in an area. And uh, one of the things that I would really like to start including in uh, some of my own games, let's get rid of these smaller ones, is a lot more like explorative kind of elements. And a lot of jagged places over here. Oh yes, the upvoting. Yeah, I can uh, I can put that into chat as well. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that. Um, Uh, no one can post inside of chat. I'm not sure where I have that link actually uh, at the moment. I'll dig it out here shortly and uh, put that into chat. Yes, there's uh, we have um, a place where you can submit uh, any sort of features that you'd like and upvote them. It gives us a good indication on what is most prevalent or most requested by um, those using. Now also included in this, I have these little uh, bursty kind of backgrounds. If you need to have a little bit extra um, oomph uh, in making sure that these are visible. Uh, you can kind of place these in behind. And again, uh, these are all able to be, especially if you put them all in one layer. And these will help make everything exceptionally visible. That one's a little bit off. so relaxing just uh, kind of working on this stuff. And we can come back in and again we can change these to any color we wish. And again, we can also change these individually to help us uh, mark any sort of uh, important kind of uh, 
aspects that we want to have a visual representation of, whether they be factions or, or so on and so forth. Oh yes, the Tinkerbell effect. I wonder, I, I, I have these base letters in here. I wonder if I could, uh, if we could do it this way as well. Let's make a new painting layer. I used these the other day and actually put them on a spaceship and they worked exceptionally well. But uh, let's just see what we can do here. Now that I'm a little bit curious about this. You gotta remember our alphabet. And then we can come in and adjust these colors as well. Maybe we'll make them green. Maybe like a dark green. A little bit of extra effort, and you can certainly do it with this heart pack. Uh, and I can even kind of uh, move it after the fact and line it up perfectly. But yes, the textable edit field would be a little bit nicer. Uh, you certainly can. You just have to do it uh, with a letter by letter. And we, you can actually do it pretty easily. I actually did it before um, what I was actually working on. And I used uh, these uh, more futuristic kind of ones. And in a classic kind of format, right, you can just, uh, you can simply stamp them in. And then I use control to snap it to the grid. I want to make sure I'm here. And once you snap it to the grid, it's much easier to make sure it stays lined up. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree with you, Dark Mantle. This is a this is a little bit more of a cumbersome way that you can go about it, but uh, it's certainly uh, able to be done. The other thing that you can do, uh, Dark Mantle, uh, is um, a very simple way that you can uh, create your images, maybe in Photoshop or uh, GIMP or something. You can do your text, uh, export it as an image, uh, and then uh, you can easily bring it in. But yes, it would be nice to have a tool right inside of FGU where you could uh, add in all of those different elements. I completely agree. And we can just play around with all of this stuff. It's so much fun. And then I would just drop this right down in here. Let's put it at the top of the list. And now this is all just one unit. So we can move this all around independently. In addition, I could move these around if I wanted to as well.
And one of the great things about setting up these maps uh, in this particular type of system uh, is that we can always come in and we can begin to like measure distances between areas. Uh, so if we want to actually create these areas to scale, uh, and the quick way of creating these pointers is just by using both of my mouse uh, buttons, right and left. And I could uh, maybe go from one to the next and know that that's 150 miles and so on and so forth. Uh, no, you, you could not do that unless you did it out in an ex exterior program, Drake takes. So the question is, if I were making a map, I could make uh, my shield, for example, on its own map, then export it and reuse it over and over again. Uh, no, you, you can't. Not inside of FGU, not currently. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to do that, uh, but we can't do it at the moment. What you can do is... Uh, do any sort of text that you want to in an exterior program, export it as like a PNG, uh, put it into your images folder, and then access it and put it onto any map you wanted. So currently, uh, instead of doing any of those things, what we can do is create notes, for example. So here's my test note. So if I were to create a note and put a uh, marker here, for example, and I was going to call this uh, the temple, and then write in all the cool stuff about it. And then I would have uh, these little markers. But uh, most of you would probably already know uh, this kind of interaction with the system. And these are currently the only system that we have uh, in order to have like that kind of information and text uh, in here. Oh, is it true? Drake takes. I'll have to double check that and see if I can uh, uncover. So one of the things that I was actually thinking about doing with this uh, particular art pack in this way is creating like a hex map and, and, and then um, actually starting off in a particular spot and expanding from there. And so kind of uh, almost randomizing what uh, places uh, are uncovered as it goes across and then uh, creating that uh, kind of scenario. So what we could actually do in this kind of instance as well. Let's see, we have this like dock, right? This, this one that we made a long time ago with some of the older uh, art products. Uh, we could take a map like this, for example, and then we can just drop this right here. So as we move into this location, we can just pull up these maps. Or if we were going to do a dungeon, I wonder if I have any on here. Well, we have our House of Lament. We can always throw this in somewhere. So if we were, for example, to have this house here, uh, you can make all of these kind of interactions with your base map. Which is super useful. Oh, a sewer art pack? Uh, you can already kind of create a sewer uh, already, uh, if you so wished, with the current art packs using a combination of the interior uh, art packs and some of the underground stuff, as well as maybe some coastal things, water and whatnot. I can show you how to make a sewer really quickly. So let's, um, 
Well, let's go into our assets. I'll actually go into the 2019 art package and we'll go into our tiles. Excuse me. Let's grab a couple of these water tiles. And this is going to be my base and I'll actually duplicate this, uh, make four of them. And we'll make sure that we're in our correct area here. And just to randomize this a little bit, I am going to uh, select these, this one. Yeah, let's select this one and this one. I'm going to flip them. And let's actually flip these as well. Just so that we get this neat little pattern, we're going to be covering up a lot of this, but uh, super easy to do. Oh yeah, sure. No problem, Drake Takes. I'm on it. And then the next thing I'm going to go to is the uh, 2019... No, not 2019. I'm going to go to the Interior Map Pack 2. And I'll grab some floors. We have some nice uh, like stone kind of floors in here that we can use. And I'll create a new painting layer here and I'll just set my grid to 100 by 100 and I actually should probably turn down my grid opacity so it's not too intrusive and switching back over into a painting layer uh, I think I'll make this a bit bigger let's make this 4 by 4 what I'm actually going to be doing is uh, the reverse of what I normally do. So I'll have like these sewer areas in the middle. Maybe I'll make them 10 feet wide. And I'm just holding down control so I can snap to the grid uh, perfectly. And maybe I'm just going to bring this up. It looks like that these are just slightly uh, off here. I'm going to have to fix that so you don't get that uh, strange little divide there. And then maybe we'll do something like this. And I could continue this on, uh, especially. Yeah, I agree, Drake takes. I, I think that Drake takes, man, I'm having a hard time speaking today. I always lower it down, always. Uh, and then I can just go into, uh, I can start to create anything that I wish, right? I'm going to actually uh, grab all of these. Let's make a new folder for our water. And the reason why I oftentimes put these all into folders is not only just for organization purposes, but uh, also uh, I, it allows me to interact with them as one unit. So I can come in here and I can, uh, I'm going to change the color of this water, right? I want it to be like a murky kind of yucky green a little bit brown and we can even create an effects layer for our water uh, and I'm going to drop this down in underneath so it's just on our water itself so we get some nice little uh, fluctuations in the water and then I'm going to go up into uh, my brushes and here we have a whole bunch of different types of walls and whatnot. And depending on what I'm actually trying to uh, produce here, what I'm actually trying to do uh, will help me determine what I'm actually going to use uh, for these different kind of uh, elements. So again, I'm just going to hold down control. I'm going to snap to the grid uh, and I'll start to build out some of this structure here. And I'm just doing this super quick here for the uh, demonstrations. And let's say it's probably going to be something along these lines. So we have these little like walkways on one side of the wall and then we have, uh, and then we want to make sure we label these 
walls, and this is floors. And if I want to do any sort of other stuff uh, that's around or whatnot, I can certainly do that as well. And now I can come into my line of sight, right? And I can uh, duplicate all of this as, so I can instantly create my line of sight for my walls. And I could set up uh, any sort of lighting that I wanted to in the particular area, shadows and whatnot. Uh, maybe we want to go into, this would be a great place for our goblin uh, art package. And we have some cool little platform brushes that we can use. Maybe we want to do some makeshift kind of uh, little um, walkways across and whatnot, build up all kinds of different stuff. Uh, we can even go into our decorations and uh, grab some of these like scraps and things and begin to put the stuff around. Really begin to create a really cool little area in here. Just say Drake. Uh, there's no way to adjust the roundness of the uh, walls. There isn't. So if we go back in, let, let me just demonstrate a couple of things uh, which probably should be noted here. I'll just grab this one. Or maybe we'll grab one of these stone walls. So it should be noted that it is based off of, uh, and here, uh, let me just demonstrate here. I'm going to go right next to this wall. Uh, and so you can see it is it's it is based off of the size of the wall, uh, and it also is based off of uh, the dimensions of the grid, I believe. So if we change this down to fifty by fifty, and we get back into our uh, images here, and so we can uh, uh, we can change how this interacts a little bit more. Uh, a lot of a lot of the times, what I will will do uh, is, and maybe we can do this on this side as well. And we can just hide this wall. So you can see that this uh, bends less than the other uh, because of the size of the wall itself. I guess that the grid doesn't really have any effect on it. Um, but uh, what it does allow us to do is I can uh, change some of these parameters. You can see we're going to get always a nice uh, clean kind of turn on the inside. And we're going to get the most amount of uh, change on the outside. So one way that we can get around this, if we want to, uh, let me just create a new painting layer. So what we can do is we can, I'm going to hold down control and go all the way to the edge here. And then I'm going to double click and end it. And then I'm going to do the same. And that's going to give me a much uh, more accurate, this should probably start up there. And oftentimes what I will do in my art packages, if we go back to an interior art package here. So here we have uh, similar kind of things and we go into our walls and I will include in it uh, little elements that you can uh, actually overpaint uh, so that to make a perfect kind of corner. So here to demonstrate in this one, for example, we'll take this uh, regular stone wall and if I were to draw this out and uh, let's say I could either double click and end it and then pick it up and do it again. Or even if I uh, bend it around this corner, as you can see here, I will go into this little wall section and I'll grab whatever corner I think is going to be the most appropriate. And then I can just kind of place this right, whoop, make sure that I'm in the stamp tool at this point. And here you can see that this isn't going to work quite as well.
Oh, there may not be in the uh, sci-fi one. I'm. If there's not, uh, let me know and I'll add some. And so now let's make this, uh, let's get rid of this. Let's start to make this a little bit more like a swamp, right? We're going to add in some gross textures to do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so I'm going to come all the way up. Let's just type in texture. Uh, we have lots of different textures that I oftentimes use, um, usually. Uh, maybe we'll actually go, oh, well, we could use... Um, some of the stuff from the new decal art pack. So here we have a nice little chipped area here. And it's got lots of uh, interesting kind of texture stuff on it. I'm going to create a new painting layer and I'm going to put it right above the floors. Uh, I'm going to drop down my opacity of this. Not that far, maybe something like something like this. And I can begin to stamp this stuff in. And I'm going to lower uh, layer this on top of it a little bit. You can see we can start to get lots of cool kind of textury kind of stuff in there. And again, I can always come in and uh, oh, and adjust these colors. Maybe I want to make them probably more green or probably less blue, something like this. And we can even use some of these blood decals as well. I think this is my favorite one. I wonder what happens when I, yeah. Sewers have to be kind of gross, right? Look at all these flies. We can start to add stuff like this in. So much fun. And now let's start to add in uh, some of our uh, ambience and whatnot. So I'm going to turn on uh, my lighting system. And I think I'll just uh, switch over to some ambient lighting here. Maybe we'll keep our colors true and just drop this down. Or we could actually turn this off and just add in uh, some additional, maybe like some torches. That's a little bit too bright for me. And let's increase that fall off so it's a little bit more of a smooth transition. Yeah, some rat nests. For sure. And I would also like to have a little bit more separation um, from this particular element, these like side areas and the water itself. So what I would actually do, I would probably do this with an effects layer. And I create a nice little effects later and we'll do an adjust colors. And we'll drop that down and add our mask layer. I'm 
and just create like a nice little shadow down here. We can blur this out a bit. I enjoy making uh, shadows this way. Whoops. And we could do some from the walls as well. Maybe just along this edge. So you can see, you can pretty much build whatever you want to. Uh, there's no specific kind of, and I might even actually change the water a little bit. We get, You know what we need to do? We need to add in some like foam and water stuff. So I think I'll go into the, um, I think I'll actually go into the winter art package and grab some of these uh, effects of these. and use something along these lines. And we'll drop down this opacity quite a lot. And make sure I have my stamp tool selected and I'm just gonna start to stamp around some of these edges where I want some of this like foam to be built up. because we all know that the water inside of a sewer is probably going to be pretty frothy. Um, and the other thing that I have uh, to talk about on my stream today is that I'm going to be uh, doing uh, a lot of um, testing of uh, some different uh, techniques and whatnot that I'm going to be producing for my art packs. And uh, I'm going to be needing uh, some people for doing a little bit of that testing with me. So if you're interested in helping create the uh, art packs as good as they can be, uh, it's uh, more along the lines of um, creating uh, art packs in a way that are easily usable uh, by everyone. So if you have any interest in helping uh, make all of the art packs as good as they possibly can be in testing out some of the image usage and doing that kind of stuff, uh, then uh, please let me know. I always put um, my uh, email address into the chat at the end. Uh, and so you can uh, send me an email and uh, I will uh, we'll be putting together a small group of people that I will be using to help test out some certain uh, aspects. You know what this needs? This needs a time of day effects layer. And maybe we'll just come in here and readjust this watercolor a little bit. And we can come into our water effects layer and maybe just 
give it a little bit more droplet. And maybe drop down our horizontal intensity. Yeah. And now when we switch back over, uh, we can see here we can add in a couple more lights. So we got two and eight there. Let's let's uh, maintain that kind of um, thing. We'll add in a couple more. That's a little bit much. I think we'll drop this one down to something like uh, five. And let's change that to Oh yes, this is starting to get very atmospheric. Maybe we'll put this over on this side. Voila! We have created a little um, sewer area. Or at least like an underwater like aqueduct or something. Who knows? Add in all of the different elements. We could even place something uh, under the water. So if we wanted to do uh, an additional element uh, on the bottom here, we could, and then we could do like semi-transparent water. Uh, and then we could do all, all kinds of cool little stuff underneath here too as well. So one of the cool things that uh, we can do is, uh, let's say we grab, let's go back into the 2019 art pack. Nope, that's crests. And I'll grab one of these backgrounds and I'm just going to turn that off for a second and we'll grab something like this, put this right on the top here and I'm going to drop it all the way down underneath. So now what I can do is grab this. Whoop, did I put it inside of here? I don't want it inside. I want it outside, but under. So here we can grab this now and we can reduce the opacity of it. Right. And now, uh, well, we could actually duplicate this too. We, if we wanted to maintain the same kind of color consistency, uh, we certainly could. We could duplicate this and have one on top of another. But now we can do things in between, right? We can we can put in all kinds of stuff in between. So let's say we wanted to. Oh, let's go into our tokens. Uh, we can probably. We don't want a pog. We want the tokens here. See if there's some sort of, oh, we could do a snake. Yeah, let's grab the snake. So uh, one of the great things that I always like to point out is that all of our image assets now are interchangeable. You can use these in multiple different ways. Um, so let's say, for example, I want to just drag and drop this out like this. I certainly can. I don't know. I don't know where I just dragged and dropped that to be, but somewhere. I don't see it in my list here. Um, but let's say that it is. Let's see here. Let's see where this the, that snake went. Did it completely? Let's make these all player visible again. How did this one get down here? Put this back where it goes. I don't know. I've done something crazy here as, as usual. Let's grab another one and drop it. Out. Oh, it seems to be happening. Oh, oh, it must be the new changes in the token system, right? Oh yeah. So uh, th these are new changes. These, this didn't used to be the way. 
I forgot about this. Uh, it used to be just handled like an image. So now what we actually have to do is load it in. Uh, we can load it in as an image here and we have to stamp it in, right? So let's make it nice and big so that we can kind of see it and we can stamp it in like this and drop it down in underneath and have this kind of like uh, just barely seen up through the water kind of stuff. And we can change our parameters here. Yeah, I forgot that they had recently changed that so that you can drag and drop tokens. So strike what I said before. It used to be that all of the images were interchangeable. And they still are kind of, but you just have to interact with them slightly different. Uh, we could even grab some of these rats, for example, and if we wanted to put them, you know, like up uh, scurrying around and whatnot, uh, we certainly could. And paint these around. Put the rats in their nest. That's right. Get back in the nest. Oh, we could we could do a little duck. Do a little duck swimming on the water. So you can do lots and lots of fun stuff. Food for the snake. Snakes are going to get full. All right, guys. Well, that's enough um, kind of going down this rabbit hole. Is there any other questions that you guys might have? Let me let me check chat. I'm going to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And we can move this back and look at this, how a player would see it. Dank, dark place. Oh, thanks very much, uh, Zerbius. Yeah, I like the uh, water. Eff I like the effects in general. Um, in fact, we could even add in... Uh, right on the top of a lot of this stuff, I might even add in another uh, effect layer. And I would actually uh, bring this down very much. Put in a speed of like 55. And then we can add in a mask for this. And then we would just uh, kind of enable it through these little uh, channels. And we can blur out the edges so it's not so abrupt. If we wanted to, we could put this just above the water so that it's like down low or maybe just above like uh, the floor, but not up into the walls. So much fun that you can do. Uh, no, I don't think there are any crystals or geodes. Nope. Uh, maybe I'll put some in for you, J-Rock, though. I'll do a couple this week. Yeah, missed. I think that with the clouds in this uh, scenario, we could probably even up them a little bit. Oh, yes, we could do some glowing mushrooms. Oh, 
I guess we can add in some shadows and change the offset here a little bit. Super fun. We add giant alligator. Uh, no. Uh, so the question is uh, from uh, the the Wumpus Cat. The Wumpus Cat. Uh, did you guys turn the undo control Z back on yet? No, that is on the slate though, I believe for the next update. Uh, because of the, uh, we did, there was like a pretty major overhaul on some of the underlying systems uh, inside of the image uh, area. And um, it's uh, required a completely different take on how it was kind of interacted with. So it is, uh, it's definitely getting uh, situated and should be in a much better state when it comes back to us. So a little bit of patience, but uh, it will be getting here for sure. But yes, uh, I, uh, I miss it very much as well. So hopefully it'll be here soon. Fix these quarters a little bit with this. All right, so uh, do you guys have any other questions or is there anything else that I can help you guys with before I head out? We're kind of winding down here. Uh, we got about, um, well, a few minutes left. Oh, yeah, I have the same problem sometimes, uh, the Wumpets Cap. I will not be paying attention over here, be too focused on what I'm actually working on, and I will make a ton of new layers. Hopefully in the future, too, we'll be able to collapse some layers down. Uh, there is a whole bunch of maps that I have created um, in the module exchange as well. So yes, uh, all of the products uh, that I use to make these maps with are available for purchase or through the art subscription. Uh, also on the forums, uh, in I believe it is in the armory uh, in the map section. And let me get a link for you guys. So... And here you're able to create maps uh, and share them. And there's a bunch that I have created as well. Oh, not creating enough layers. Yeah, I've done that too. Ooh, there isn't a shortcut key. You know, that's the next thing that I'm going to be putting together uh, for a um, for a uh, uh, kind of proposal is a bunch of different shortcut keys. So I want to be able to, uh, for example, hit E and immediately go to my eraser uh, in the painting uh, area and so on and so forth. Because I am the shortcut key king. I love them. I use them constantly. Oh, look, I still got the duck out here. We got to do like a little, little line of, of ducks here. Got a whole little family going. 
Yeah, you're so very welcome. Oh yeah, sure. I can go. I am actually in Core RPG right here. Um, so Core RPG is very limited in what we have available, um, but I can go through all of the basic kind of parameters we have, like um, a party sheet, um, color picker for our dice, calendar. Uh, let's see here the options menu. effects, modifiers, uh, we have our character sheets and our character sheets here. Let me, uh, I can probably uh, back out and uh, um, let's see here. Well, let's go into 5e for you and so that you can get a little bit better. Let me make sure that I have modern dark selected. And this will give you a much better kind of idea about uh, the way it's going to look in um, a fuller kind of rule set. As uh, Core RPG um, is designed for um, rule set creation rather than uh, straight out of the box implementation. So here we have uh, the 5e character sheets. Uh, let's see, we have our notes. And you've seen the images quite well today. We have tables. Uh, story entries. Our quests. Encounters. Uh, parcels. I, I, you know, I rarely use parcels. Do you guys ever use parcels? Yeah, ducks in a row. And here are all our specialized content for um, 5e. Races and whatnot. Skills. Uh, here are all of our items, and we have all of our search functionality for our items here. Uh, we have a cool little, uh, one of the cool things about this is that we have a uh, an adjustable uh, dice tower, so you can kind of make this fit wherever you'd like. It does have a minimum size, but uh, everything kind of glows up and uh, looks pretty nice there. And here are our specialized lists of items. Spells again, it's much in the same fashion. And in our library, if we move into, let's say, for example, our uh, reference manuals, we have all of our cool little reference manual stuff. Uh, which I prefer using the reference ma manual to uh, using a lot of the story entries and whatnot. Oh, you use parcels a lot? Uh, there's no in, 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 innate uh, font size change. So there's no, I can change the size of a font, but then it's, it's stuck that way. There's no way to make it variable in the current situation, Hauser. But that is a good request. And the problem with it is is that many of the fields, um, oh, Abyssal Chicken, uh, many of the fields, you see I naturally just go to images. Uh, let's say, for example, if we were to pull up tables. Uh, so, and if I were to change the size of um, this font, for example, uh, this area is determined um, statically and therefore uh, any sort of font size changes will have to be reevaluated. evaluated. 
<laughs> okay, thanks so much, Zerbius. Uh, maximum image size. Well, um, so I tend to, uh, I don't usually use anything that's uh, larger than uh, like six megabytes uh, when I'm doing like image creation. I try to keep things uh, pretty uh, minimal. But uh, oftentimes I'll use multiple images on top. So I don't know what the overall image size is inside of Fantasy Ground. So let's say, for example, if we were to go back, let's go back into one of my stream uh, campaigns here. Is it this one or this one? I don't know. Let's see. So here we have a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let's do this one. This one has a lot of different stuff in it. So in this map, for example, uh, we created this a while ago. Uh, this is a mixture of like this hellish landscape that kind of goes into a little forested area over here. And it looks like our shadows got removed. Um, but anyway, uh, so this uh, particular image, right, uh, if we look at the overall um, size of it, it's 50 by 30 on a 100 by 100 uh, grid. So that would be um, 5,000 by 3,000 um, typical pi pixels. But we have lots and lots of layers of images uh, painted on top of each other. Uh, and something like this will be handled no problem inside of uh, Fantasy Grounds. All right, guys. Well, if you have no other questions, it's just about six o'clock. Um, and so we're going to call it for today, unless somebody uh, jumps out there. Um, but here is my uh, work email. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, Bella Muerte. And so anybody who is interested in helping me test out some products and uh, figuring out uh, the best kind of uh, workflow, uh, not necessarily for me. I usually come about it from a different kind of perspective when I, when I create art packs. And I really need the perspective of people who are going to use them. Uh, so if you're interested in helping that out, uh, that would be great. You can certainly send me an email. Uh, also, if you guys run into any problems or have any questions or concerns, uh, throughout the week or while you're working if there's something you want to see me cover uh, in my stream and this next week I have a couple of maps uh, that were sent to me from Sven which I'm going to be showing off uh, so that's going to be super fun and uh, anything like that if you guys are interested in um, showing off some of the stuff that you've done certainly send that along I would love to show that that off and, and see what you guys are creating I love that um, and uh, yeah, but besides that, have a great weekend, have a great week, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody.